Hi, my name is Dave Marr and I'm a grandmaster of the business Strategy Game Online. I've been winning the simulation since the mid-2000s, rescuing a company from bankruptcy and maintaining market share dominance on the leaderboard. I'm doing my first ever Year 11 video with a special guest, my dad. I graduated university over 15 years ago with a Bachelor of Business Management, honors with distinction. However, my business knowledge began from watching my father run the supermarket for business for over 30 years. For a very realistic take on the BSG, I'll explain the game with my dad present to give real-world insights. This is a Year 11 video to help students get started. Let's start with the finance screen. As we can see here is that um, the finance screen has a couple options available for us to, to work with. The finance screen is one, of, is one of the most important screens in the simulation. This controls cash inflows uh, into the company and potentially cash outflows. Uh, as you can see, there's loans to be um, sourced out for additional cash. And these are the loans that our company has currently. Uh, there's also an option to uh, issue a dividend and uh, an option to repurchase or sell shares. Let's have a look under the, uh, the loans. There's two loans here, one for 18,000 at 8.2% and the other loan is 79,000 at 7.7%. If you check the balance sheet, which is just down here, um, the balance sheet shows that both loans are 10 years. This is important, okay, because we're comparing the apples to apples, is that this $18,000 loan at 8.2% for a 10-year loan is more expensive than a 10-year loan at 8%. So therefore, this is the superior loan to have. We should refinance the more expensive loan and acquire the cheaper interest rate. Uh, is that as we as we move into this direction, um, let's let's discuss debt to equity. So, Dad, is that uh, in your thoughts, what is the superior strategy, debt financing or equity financing? Uh, Dave, from uh, my experience, um, especially in uh, family business, uh, debt financing is usually the way to go and a lot more popular. Um, as you do not want to give away your business or any percentage of your business. Um, there's a, the other school of thought is if you want to get big, then you have to, then you're going to start diluting and that's when equity financing comes in. You look for other shareholders and your partners. But for uh, our uh, uh, thoughts and, uh, and usually, you know, family business, it's uh, only logical to go debt financing. And usually that's at the top five banks or um, the larger banks. Yeah, so potentially Wells Fargo, Chase, Bank of America, one of the, one of the large banks. Five banks. larger banks, yes, yes. Yeah. Chase, Wells Fargo, it's a Citibank, right? Right. Yeah. Bank of America, yeah. All right, well, is that that is the right answer within the simulation is that if a company is successful the stock price will rise so therefore is that why would a company that is successful why would it issue equity um to see its stock price rise and have that new owner of the share uh, experience that capital gain is that um dad you would agree is that uh, the way to view the market is that it's best to buy shares at a lower price would you agree with that statement? Well, um, you always want to buy things at a lower price to your advantage and watch it appreciate, right? And uh, share appreciation is always due to earnings. So at some point in time in your family business, if in the event that you do really well and you want to expand and go a lot bigger, then that's where equity financing comes in. Uh, if you choose to give away a piece of it, because not everybody wants to stay small. Right. Right. Is that um, for the purposes of the stage, And that's one stage at a time. Yeah. So for the purpose of the, of the simulation is that let's buy back 100 shares. The, the reason why we're, why we're buying it back is because is that we do want to get big. However, okay, is that, is that uh, 
we still want to be the company that that is able to enjoy the capital appreciation of our own shares. The company currently in year 11 is small. And our company at K, if as long as we have a, a successful year 11, the company stock price will go up. So if our company buys back the shares, then therefore our company stock price will go up because of um, fewer shares outstanding, along yeah. with a lower equity, um, shareholders equity, as the shares being used, uh, sorry, the as the money being used to buy back the shares comes out of the shareholders equity. And lastly, as since ROE and EPS both go up, then therefore that the stock price also increases as well. So let's start uh, with the next screen, corporate citizenship. As you can see here is that it reads, aggressive and astute pursuit of social responsibility strategy for a five year period can increase the company's image rating by 15 to 20 points. Investment into this screen, okay, is your company's ability to increase your image rating by 15 to 20 points which is what matters by the end of uh, the simulation. Most simulations go on till year 20, but could end a little bit earlier, maybe 18, 16. Um, as you can see here, okay, is that uh, the image rating is based upon an average of the most recent three years, right here. So therefore, okay, is that your, your company wants to have the highest image rating uh, for the last three years. Uh, so therefore, is that um, as I want to have the most benefit of the screen, I, I action all of the um, options here. So institution of a supplier code of conduct, improved working conditions, which includes lighting, um, child care facilities for plant uh, employees, ethics training, energy efficiency initiatives, and use of recycled boxing and packaging. I do all of the options effectively, except for charitable contributions, uh, mostly because I find that uh, charity, well, it doesn't add a whole lot to, uh, to the company's core operations. Everything else does. Uh, this, this one is debatable. I, I don't like it myself. I'm, I'm not that charitable, I guess. Um, so let's ask my dad. Dad, what's your thoughts of a business being a socially responsible citizen in a community? Is it important? You want the image there, but um, that, uh, that does affect the bottom line because they are counterintuitive in the thoughts. Uh, you always want to be a good corporate governance in your business. Uh, at the same time, you have to watch, you have to uh, achieve a bottom line. Yeah. Is that dad? Is that I remember uh, when growing up? Is that uh, our business would uh, give donations to yeah. um, uh, Any charitable organization, small community leagues, the library. Um, I guess, I guess that's a little bit different from the BSG. However, is that, is that in practice, actually, you definitely were a, a supportive uh, citizen within the business community. Okay. The main thing is that, would you agree yes. that, yes. that investment into social responsibility, okay, um, it improves a, a, a business's uh, image over a period of time? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. It is actually it is important. Like I it said, it's important. Image. Yeah. So right. I guess for the context of the, of the BSG is that uh, my dad did say is that the bottom line uh, that that is important is that um, for my dad's business we took more of a a true charitable uh, corporation approach. Um, in the case of the BSG, my personal approach is that I like to invest into everything else okay for green energy. Um, that was, uh, that's, a, it's a, it's a strategic approach. I guess it's up for everyone to decide of how they want to move forward. Okay. Let's move on to celebrities. Uh, celebrities are a very interesting, uh, option to take within the is that uh, there's a few rules to, to watch out for here. 
Um, those rules are, is that um, a company is only able to get up to three celebrities in a given year, okay? This is a very important rule. So currently there is uh, eight celebrities. Our company, let's just bid for just for example, a lucky number. Let's do 888, eight, eight, okay? And let's put this, put this, this bid for all of the celebrities. Is that uh, I like to prioritize the three-year celebrities because it ensures that the celebrity would be more uh, stable in their employment for our company. Okay, so priority upon three years. Uh, the uh, in the case of celebrities, um, there is a maximum amount of a, a celebrity appeal that a company can possibly get. Uh, having the total amount of celebrities, which is 300. Um, the quick um, the, uh, the the quick rule of thumb is about four to five celebrities, and, and that's about 300. And uh, that's, that's basically it, is that uh, uh, having celebrities on your side, especially early in the game, is very important because not, not many companies have celebrities at the, at the very beginning, therefore it, it allows for an absolute advantage in the, in the earlier stages. However, as the game progresses, and especially because it's likely that these celebrities will also increase in price, is that uh, you can't rely upon celebrities okay, that are able to be um, that are able to be uh, swiped by, by other companies. So therefore, other advantages must be made in the later stages of the game. But still, this is very important and um, should be a decision that every company should make. Let's have a look at our, at our next screen here, the production facility screen or plant capacity screen. On this screen, our company is able to make some very strategic decisions here, and, um, which includes the ability to construct new facility space. Let's, um, let's start with a small expansion of 3,000 in Latin America to begin, maybe 1,000 in Latin America. Um, you don't have to go do it this way, but um, something to work with to start. Our company is also able to build new equipment in North America of 1,000. As you can see here, the facility space is 5,000 and we only have 4,000 equipment. So let's shore up our position by having an extra 1,000 equipment uh, built here. In the case of Asia Pacific, uh, the max space available is 6,000 pairs of shoes of production equipment and our company currently has 4,000. So let's build 2,000 here is that our company builds the facility space this year 11, and the facility space can be then occupied with new equipment that we buy in year 12. Our company has an option of four upgrades here. Upgrade A, a reduction of reject rates. Upgrade B, um, a reduction of production run and setup costs. Option C, which is a purchase of special equipment to increase SQ rating by one star, and upgrade D, robot assisted pro pro uh, production to increase worker productivity by 50%. This is very much a strategic decision and also a stylistic decision, okay, for what you're doing for your plant. Uh, there's a lot of uh, thoughts, okay, of what is the right upgrade. Is that uh, I know that there are other YouTubers out there that uh, they say that upgrade B is the best upgrade. Now, I kind of disagree. Um, upgrade B is good for companies that have a high model count. However, is that you're only able to get uh, the benefits, which is a set amount at 500 models. It does not scale. Uh, the other upgrades do scale, um, but for the purposes of this, let's get upgrade A. Upgrade A is a very underrated upgrade. Um, I don't know why it doesn't get much love, but is that the way I view it is that it helps decrease reject rates, which effectively enables the company to take the, the, the shoes that, that would otherwise be rejects and be able to sell them. So therefore you save on costs, but actually it makes your company's facilities uh, more efficient because you're, because you're producing more, uh, more product. Is that, uh, let's press save the decision. And let's move on to the next and last um, standalone auxiliary screen. Let's have a look at the compensation and training page here. Uh, this page is very, very interesting. Um, 
is that uh, this is the compensation of all of your employees. Now, oh, and, and training, of course. So let's hear from my dad. Is that dad, what would you say is your um, view on how you employ uh, your employees? Do you pay them like, you know, base wages, 5%, 10% wage increases a year? Um, do you do fringe benefits, incentive pay? Do, do you focus upon paying your employees or training your employees? What's your thoughts? Um, your uh, work environment is very important. So you want to give, um, you choose staff that are uh, in, in, in specifically in retail. You choose staff that are utmost friendly and um, uh, that enjoy the retail environment. That's one. Two, in regarding to compensation, you always start with some kind of a base uh, hourly wage, uh, and then uh, you give them a three month um, uh, time frame. And if they exceed that, you give them a nice pay bump. That pay bump could be easily 10% going up. Okay, depending on who it is, depending on um, what their expectations are, that correlate to what you're prepared to do when you first hire them. If they exceed well exceed your expectations, then they're in a whole different uh, scenario. Uh, so um, uh, usually you can give two pay raises a year. You can go to four pay raises a year if they outperform. Usually retail, uh, if it's not commission based, is performance based, not uh, only time based. So if you have loyal employees that have been there for multiple years, then you're giving them annual bonuses, okay? Uh, and you're giving them uh, um, annual pay raises. Uh, so your staff are the pillar, is the pillar to your business. Um, and they are also the face to your business so that you have a bottom line. Okay. All right. Well, that, that's pretty good. Um, is that uh, to add to all of that, Dad, would you say that it's important to train your employees? As I said at the very beginning, you have to give them the best training possible because what goes in comes back out. Uh, they don't know what you want unless you train them. The, the, the proper procedures uh, in regarding, for example, our business, um, uh, starting from uh, greeting your employees to um, uh, being efficient, uh, neat and clean, and receiving. So uh, everything has a procedure. Okay. All right. Well, that's that's an interesting um, point of view. Is that um, it, it, it is a good point of view. Uh, is that. Uh, employees that perform well should be compensated more Absolutely. is that um in the context of the game this is how i view it is that uh i like to focus upon high best practices i like to ensure that the employees are well well trained and is that i strip them off with one percent wage increases now I, I guess this is a little bit of a different you know mindset is that my dad ran a super supermarket um, is that uh, I, I work in a corporate environment, a unionized environment, and historically speaking, before COVID anyways, is that getting one to two pay raises a year was the best. Um, pretty usual, uh, five, 10%, at least for a union environment was um, not common. Uh, there's a different view of this uh, private business. I guess the person is able to get a higher pay raise uh, per year. I don't start off employees with much incentive uh, incentive pay or fringe benefits to start, but I may increase this later on, um, as long as they are productive. And at the start, they're just learning. So let's start the training program now, and let's reward them, pay them more later. Let's press save. All right, let's move on to the production, sorry, the brand production screen. So this is where it gets very interesting, is that the, the five previous screens being compensation and training, uh, 
plant facilities, celebrities, corporate citizenship, and finance are all auxiliary screens. They are standalone. They can really be done. Um, well, usually I like to do it before, as you can see, uh, but uh, it could be done later uh, on as well. Is that these screens that, that 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 we're looking at are the very core screens of the game? Is that this is the screen of your strategy? Um, as you can see, that there's brand uh, footwear production, uh, superior materials, models, enhanced styling and features, PQM, and of course, is that uh, we're able to see that our our brand uh, Paris Two manufacturers is also here as well. So for the purposes of this is that let's bring our company down to the baseline. So I'd like to bring it down to zero, zero, zero here, zero here, and zero here, and zero here. The purpose of this is that I wanna see how the plants are um, producing relative to each other. You can see here is that North America is producing shoes at 2175 and Asia Pacific at 1849. Now, North America has an extra $4 tariff and a $1 shipping charge. That's $5. So 1849 plus 5 would be 2349. And therefore, is that um, the NA plant at this stage of the game, year 11, is more cost effective uh, for the interim. Is that uh, let's put 6,000 to be manufactured in North America. And let's go put in, in an amount of, uh, let's just say 5,000. Um, is that um, a company is able to increase the superior materials and then help increase quality. You can see it here is that uh, this, uh, this is a one, uh, increasing it here makes it 1.7. Um, enhanced lighting features also helps increase quality. And the, and the last option, TQM, also increases quality. Of the three, I prefer to do TQM. Now, how much TQM? It, it remains to be, it's, it's kind of debatable. Is that, uh, but let's just, for the purposes of this, do 3.5. Um, TQM investment is helpful. It is expensive, but it is helpful because it helps increase quality, re reduce reject rates, which is also good. And it also uh, helps increase the quality of, the sh of your product, the shoes, in the future. So therefore, it is all long-term thoughts uh, to help increase the efficiency and the quality of your product in the future. Um, the other options, the superior materials and, and enhanced selling and features is, uh, is only what's going into the product for the year at hand, which has its, its value. Um, but for the purposes of this, I'll leave it blank, okay? I'll, and I'll let you decide that. I like doing more of a well-rounded strategy. Let's say around, let's say 300 or 350 models uh, to get started. I will just do three, we'll, we'll do 350. Um, and that's the brand production screen. Let's, let's move on to the next screen. Um, brand production is the first of the Holy Trinity. However, we also have to intermingle it with the uh, secondary screen decay, which is now moving into private label. I don't like going to private label because I can now segment the private label production separate from the branded uh, marketing uh, brand production. And, um, and, and have it more or less a standalone situation. So in private label here, our company has four plants, which um, only the Asian Pacific plant has any production being produced there as that's how I, I made the, uh, the proration, as you can see in brand production. We have, we have 5,000 of the 7,200. So I have to allocate the shoes there. If I put 5,500 in North America, that would leave 500 and private able to be utilized. Um, our company is able to have double our respective market share. Uh, this company is, is, in, is in an industry of 12 companies. So one divided by 12 is 8.3% times by two is 16.67. So therefore 16.67 is our uh, amount of shoes that our company is able to sell before reaching the market share limitation. So we can go here, 74, and uh, we're at 16.6%, which is the amount, which is double our respective market share. And uh, actually this um, is sort of, a, sort, of a, sort of a quick way of deterring market, uh, market share is that um, a, a company could uh, take the market share here, 2664, 
and times this by, let's just say 0. 0.1666 is 445. Now, if you put this number in there, is that uh, you won't quite get the 16.6 because there is um, uh, a small amount that is under a reject rate. This is four, at 4.8% 4 right now. But it gives you an idea, Kea, of where to go, is that um, you could do the calculation. I just spot check it myself and I just work with it. Um, done this for 20 years, so I, I just, I can just see it. Is that uh, I will press uh, at the bottom here. Yes, yes, yes. The reason why it's gone up this way, okay, is because um, uh, all, all of the shoes are being are being sold and therefore, okay, the company's operations are more, uh, are more efficient and therefore um, there's, there's, there's less uh, re re reject rates uh, or rejects. Um, uniquely speaking, I will not enter the LA plant, the LA region for the very first year, although we could. Um, the case is, is that uh, I still like being a little bit conservative. Um, uh, the very first year, the LA market has a ten uh, a ten dollar tariff, which is rather high. The other tariffs in North America is four, Europe, Africa is six, and Asia Pacific is eight. Uh, for the purposes of this, let's go put our dollars at just a little bit lower, maybe thirty one ninety, just ten cents lower. Thirty six ninety. Just so that our company at K is not bidding what the default price is uh, in the very first year, other companies could just be just flowing with the what's on the screen. They may not even change the numbers at all. Uh, let's have a look at cost now. Twenty one sixty seven is the cost of private label shoes. Our company is trying to get the minimum SQ, which is a three. Uh, and as you can see here, okay, is that uh, because our company invested into TQM back on the brand production screen, no further amount is required um, for Asia Pacific. Arguably speaking, sometimes what I like to do is that because I know that that uh, the 3.3 is a little bit over this amount, I'll even shave off the TQM and brand production. Um, but I'll leave it for this. Um, if this is good enough. Let's press save. Is that uh, a question I often get though? Is what is private label? Dad, what is private label? Good question. Private label um, is, uh, in our uh, experience, is where we make it with our own name on it. Uh, so um, uh, if you have, if you're a franchise, you have. Uh, a supplier which they own private labels and uh, um, those private labels are what uh, uh, is always cost less and you retail it for a higher profit margin. So we enjoy private label in our retail environment. I am pretty sure that other um, uh, establishments in, in, in different sectors of retail, i.e. grocery, furniture, uh, tires, shoes, you name it, that is private to what you do, um, that's where you get your margin. That is actually a trade secret, private label. Yeah. Is that um, private label uh, used to be the most powerful screen in the game. In fact, whoever controlled private label would basically control the game. Uh, about four or five years ago, just a bit before COVID, the developers of the BSG nerfed the power of private label by having a market share limitation. Uh, that doesn't exist in the real world. However, they nerfed it within the game itself. But that's how powerful private label was. Private label, um, the profits that you made from this market were phenomenal. Now, private label is just a, it's just a profit sanctuary. And just to clarify what private label is, is that corporations outsource another uh, product which is being produced for them. In this case, okay, is that other customers, they want us to produce these shoes for them, but then to go put their label onto the shoe. And then okay is that they they sell the shoe thereafter for you know whatever their price point is. However, is that that's why private label price 
has to be the lowest. You have to work on making sure that our company's uh, costs are as low as possible as the, the customers um, of, of, the, of the private label market will always go after the cheapest shoe. However, okay, due to the uh, market share limitation is that they'll only get up to that market share limitation, 16.6%. And they'll move on to the to the next cheapest uh, shoe thereafter. Now there is a circumstance that what if no one sells shoes? Example in Latin America, what if no one sells? Then therefore, whoever did have shoes in that market, okay, they will sell their shoes in Latin America instead. So in this case, okay, let's uh, take all of our excess shoes from private label. So four fifty eight plus four fifty eight plus four sixty eight less 2200 is a difference of 816 shoes let's bring the shoes over here and um you know let, actually I, I should i should use the calculator on this side let's do 5000 plus 816 all i've done is just take the excess shoes from private label that we did not sell or need and put them into the branded market. That's all we've done here. Uh, let's press save. The game is, uh, the game has three markets. Um, branded production, uh, sorry, branded market is one, the largest of the three markets. Private label is the second. But there is a third market, uh, which is the internet market. Um, the internet market follows closely what's happening in branded. Uh, uniquely speaking, the internet market is, uh, is a small market to start and builds up with time. Now, I, I can the circumstance that when the internet was uh, first existed back in 95, the market, the, the internet sales were quite low. Amazon actually existed back in, let's say, 1996 or maybe 1998, very, very early. However, it only became bigger and bigger and bigger with time. Therefore, in year 11, is that the internet market is very small. But by year 20, the market will, will become very, very big. So because the, in the internet market is at this stage of its life cycle, okay, it's small, I don't put much emphasis upon the search engine advertising for now, but I, but I may in the future. So in, in the interim, okay, let's just leave it, uh, the internet market at this level. And let's make it over to the distribution screen. This actually is my favorite screen. Our company has two plants here, the North America plant and the Asia Pacific plant. Um, is that you can see the negative, the negative uh, numbers down here is negative 882, negative 760, negative 644, negative 654. And this represents a shortfall. However, our company has, you can see these red shoes here. These are the excess shoes which have not been distributed, distributed across the other regions. So our company can take these shoes and distribute them accordingly. Let's go put 3,200 here. Let's do 33. Let's add on uh, the remainder over here. That's 2436. The LA region uh, has no LA plant at this time, okay? So we have to ship it from the other regions. Um, let's go put 22 here. And let's go put 2545 here. And as you can see, okay, our company has a small amount of inventory across the four regions, a very, very, very nominal amount. Um, let's just do 2554 is that what I like to do in this circumstance, okay, is that uh, we are able to uh, equalize the, uh, the shoes across the regions. So there's not enough shoes in North America, there's almost none here. So we'll just add a little bit more up to North America and we'll add just a little bit more, okay, from Asia Pacific to Latin America. And that just equalizes it a bit. And, and very importantly, okay, is that there are circumstances where um, you, uh, where a company, okay, puts too much inventory into one plant and therefore it burdens that one region and therefore, okay, all of the inventory just piles up there and, and depreciates. So this brings up a very uh, interesting topic about inventory. 
is that um, is inventory good? Is it bad? So dad, your thoughts on inventory. Is it is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Is it good to have lots of extra inventory? Is it is it good to not have enough inventory? What's your thoughts? Inventory, you have to have inventory in any business. Otherwise, there you don't have a business. So if your business is there in selling product, you need inventory. Inventory control is the most important, amongst the most important thing in any retail business. Um, in the food business, you can't have overly too much because it's expiry date. On the other side, in the fashion business, you have overly too much and it goes outdated as well. You, uh, it's better to have um, in seasonal, it's better to run out. But as a base inventory, you need your shelves full. Shoes, furniture, or otherwise, anything else that sits on the shelf. You, uh, people like the perception of a busy store and full. So you need inventory. So you have to have uh, some finesse on inventory. Inventory control. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a good answer, is that inventory is the lifeblood of a business. Is that um, it's a very important thing. And I wouldn't call it either, a, 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 you know, having too much is good or bad, is that you want to not have enough, okay, for your demand. In this case, okay, is that our, our uh, inventory is, is just a couple hundred shoes above our projected demand. So therefore, okay, is that it's kind of tight. But at the same time, okay, what if these numbers were 500 or 1,000? Now, 1,000 is a little bit high, okay, because that's almost half of the sales for the year. We, we, we don't want that much inventory because, uh, as mentioned by my dad, is that inventory will depreciate. It will, in a food business, it will outright out, 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 out expire. In this simulation, the inventory will depreciate and lose quality. And furthermore, you're also paying storage costs too. So therefore, okay, is that you don't want too, too much, but you want enough and you want to have enough, okay, uh, in case perhaps there's sales to be had from the other, uh, from, from the other uh, competitors. Because if they run out, then the customers, okay, will come to your uh, company, uh, sorry, brand, and will buy uh, shoes with, uh, with, uh, with, um, with, with your brand label on it. All right, so is that, um, yeah, we're, we're good to go with this. Uh, let's have a look at the final screen. This completes the Holy Trinity. Now, I call it the Holy Trinity because one produces the shoes, that's the strategy. One amortizes the shoes, which is distribution. And lastly is the marketing screen. And this is, this is the, the keystone screen right here. This is where all the magic happens. So... Our company at K is able to do a couple different items here, okay? This, this is the whole marketing strategy. And as you can see, okay, is that our sales here are at 2,700, last year was 2,000. This is 23 versus 1,700. And this is 1,800 versus 1,300. And this is 1,800 versus 1,300. These sales collectively are far more than either private label or internet. The internet, so each, so the collective, uh, the, the collective, Shoes here is well over 8,000. The internet market, if we look at it, really is only about 400 shoes, 300 shoes um, across all four regions. This internet market is barely worth one, even the smallest of the branded markets. And private label isn't so hot either. 468, 458. This is small potatoes. The wholesale marketing screen at K is where it's at. Uh, there's a few items to go look at here. Price, advertising, mail, mail and rebates, delivery time, and retailer support. Now, I'm, a, I'm in favor of retailer support is that uh, I find that it is very important to uh, support your retailers. You want to have um, retailers on your side as they will stock your brand and they will push your product. However, there's a cost to the retailers. So let's do it at 5,000 here, okay? Um, just, just, just a very small amount here uh, to get started. 
um, but is that um, you will to uh, increase your, your retailer support uh, as the game progresses. Is that um, it, it is plausible to think that um, you know we should do a higher amount of retailer support, but at the same time, okay, so if, for example, if we did ten thousand, is that there will be a high cost to the company. So to ten, this is ninety five. Now our company is able to carry that cost, okay, but it is high. And your company needs to be aware of that, okay, is that, uh, is that there is a high cost attached to it. Uh, and, and also in this case, our company has a limited amount of shoes here as well. So let's increase the advertising as well. The advertising, okay, is your company's ability to advertise your brand and penetrate the other company's market share. Um, is that uh, we're able to increase it here. Just like that. Now, as you can see here, there's negative 84. Um, if, you know, it's still possible, okay, to, to move the inventory across the other regions. So I moved over here, for example. And of course, okay, our company is able to increase or decrease our price. In this case, though, our company has more or less sold all of our shoes. Therefore, this is more or less the best a company can do at this stage. In year 11, the best uh, results a company could possibly achieve is about 100, 110,000. It does depend per industry. Um, is that, uh, but you know, the base goal is to try to sell all of your inventory. And once all of the inventory is sold, you want to build more plants because you want more inventory to sell. And of course, is that, you know, whoever, whoever sells the most inventory will likely have the highest net profit if you are having uh, good margins on all of your, pro on, on all of your, um, your, uh, your, your products being sold. Let's press save. So, Let's just have a quick review over the game here and let's just see what's happened. So in the case of the compensation screen, our company um, has uh, well has trained our employees uh, at max. We have minimum wages to start. We will pay our employees more based on performance. In the case of brand production, our company has a very basic strategy in mind here with a very middle of the road in models. A person can have more or less models. With an emphasis upon TQM, uh, this is an important thing. I'm sure that other people have seen other videos also uh, mentioned this too. And this will also is a, is a late game um, contributing factor to help increase quality, reduce reject rates, and, uh, and also increase the quality for the future as well. In the case of branded facilities, our company has two upgrades, upgrade A. Uh, it, it's a strategic choice to have other upgrades. And, we're, and we are also maxing out all of our uh, facility space with new equipment. New equipment is better than the old equipment because the old equipment decay will just not be as cost effective as the, as the new stuff. So I, I prefer it. Dad, do you prefer new equipment or old equipment for your business? <laughs> That's a no brainer. Yeah. Always new equipment, but it's very, very expensive. Yeah. But it, it's, it's, it's the right capital outlay for the long term, right? Absolutely, always. But that's okay. it's it's high capital. That's right. So that, that's that's how we do business. Maybe other people they want to go use the old stuff, but our family does new new equipment. Okay. Always um, new. Always new. Always new. I, that's that's what that's what I've always learned. Always new. Just buy the new stuff. Okay, <laughs> and and it'll, it'll give you less stress in the future. Okay, yeah. is that we'll distribute all of our shoes accordingly, uh, less emphasis upon the internet market to start, wholesale marketing, our company has sold out all of our shoes, job well done. Um, in the case of private label, our company has distributed our shoes across the three markets, North America, Europe, Africa, and Asia Pacific, and not LA because the region has a high tariff. In the case of celebrities, is that our company has a bid for, for the celebrities with an emphasis upon the three-year celebrities, um, with a very basic amount to start with. Okay, it is possible that that the competition will have a higher amount for the celebrities, and um, and uh, possibly could be overpaying for them. Okay, which is also not good. In the case of corporate citizenship, lastly here, our company is uh, is investing in towards corporate citizen corporate citizenship to help increase our imagery for um, the long term, fifteen to twenty points. And in the case of finance and cash flow. Our company at K um, has refinanced the lower uh, the lower um, interest rate from eight point two to eight percent, 
bought back 100 shares as I 100% anticipate that the company's stock price will increase and we want to enjoy that capital appreciation. Um, and in the interim, okay, let's uh, reduce our, our 10 year loan because um, not required. Our, our ending cash is 120,000 and we just don't need all of that money. Um, I would say about 30,000 is, uh, is sufficient. And let's press save. All right, well, we have a couple of minutes. Yeah, I, I know is that um, we are basically done. And I hope that uh, everyone out there has learned a lot from uh, from this uh, from this exercise. Yeah, uh, please like and subscribe to my to my channel and um, and give me more ideas for new videos. I, I'm still thinking of, of what to do. Is that I brought my dad. Tell me if you think that he should go guest star on more videos, and uh, <laughs> we'll go from there. Thanks. Bye. Good night. Bye.